first speaker today is um, Anupam Bakshi from Agnes, uh, Agnesis Incorporated, where he's both the CEO and founder. The topic of his talk is automating IP and SOC verification. Um, Anupam has, uh, as I said, he's the founder and CEO, CEO at Agnesis and has more than two decades of experience implementing a wide range of products and services in high tech. Uh, he earned a high tech MBA from Northeastern University and a master's degree from Northeastern and Delhi University. Uh, he's based in Noida in India. So uh, over to you, Nupam. Thank you, Mike, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, topic of my presentation is automating IP and SOC verification. And some of the things that I will talk about have already been touched upon by Dave and uh, perhaps by Nick as well. So um, let's jump into it. Everybody's talking about you know, the hardware, how to get to market faster, how to get the SOC done quickly. Um, what we see is um, the, the challenges are, you know, as, you, as you know, verification is one of the biggest challenge. And within verification, uh, there are countless uh, challenges in itself. Uh, it stems from the, you know, the billions of gates and thousands of blocks and countless interconnects that first you have to create the design before even the verification challenge hits you. And um, you really have to, um, people do this all the time is uh, try to do reuse, you know, across uh, industries, across projects. Uh, we heard about uh, VIPs. And, and you know internal or external IPs, and um, across uh, various levels in in the system from block to subsystem to SOC. You want to reuse, for example, tests that are going from block to the SOC. So uh, that's a challenge. Um, and then a, a lot of it is uh, manual coding. Uh, you have to create things manually, and that is error prone and time consuming and uh, takes takes uh, people to do it and um, and isn't there there isn't a standard way of capturing specification although we we heard about the pss in the last two talks uh, but often a pss is still new you know and that's limited to the tests but uh, what about specification for the other aspects uh, there are different ways of capturing information by various teams within a company Large companies have even different teams doing things in different ways. And of course, the manual coding means, you know, everybody has their own coding styles and, and, and ways to capture uh, the design intent. So mostly uh, the, the verification is, a, is like a waterfall uh, model where we see that change is the only certainty. There isn't anything for, for sure, you know, uh, things are changing all the time. And um, uh, you know, as the spec changes, the the hardware changes. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, software changes, and so you know, verification and validation and all the things. All it has a domino effect. You know, everything. It has widespread ramification when the specification changes. And I'm not just talking about the test, but I'm talking about the uh, the hardware spec as well. And so um, everything needs to be re-verified. You know, when when things change. And often you see uh, duplicated efforts uh, in the, uh, in the uh, SOC team. For example, an algorithm designed by the architect or the hardware uh, design team would be verified by the verification team and implemented by the firmware team, which needs to understand that same algorithm, and then uh, validated by the product validation team. So, so the same, uh, 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 for example, test or, or programming has to be, is not shared. It, it, it is, uh, uh, it's recoded in and then uh, it is verified uh, towards the end. Um, there are um, challenges of system validation, you know, verifying hardware and software together, that, that's a big, big challenge. So the solution is, uh, according to us, is, uh, you know, focus on the uh, specification. So now there are different types of specifications, like uh, Dave mentioned, registers and memory specification. But there's also uh, custom 
uh, you, you could have uh, 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 either um, tests or programming sequences. Then you have, um, you might have a list of IPs that you're reusing. So that's a um, set of uh, uh, reuse uh, IPs that you need to um, uh, uh, specify. And then how are you connecting these IPs, the chip hookup specification? So all these are sources of information. And then they can be used to generate the outputs, like register memory, people have been doing this for a decade now. And you could create RTL, UVM test bench, uh, UVM sequences, a C, C++ driver, and documentation. Um, but custom sequences also, you, you could capture them in a, in a standard format and generate UVM sequences, uh, C and C++ driver code, and documentation. And then uh, library of IPs is like, when you collect these, uh, register memory specification along with the IP and, and and add to that the custom sequence specification that becomes a library and that affects everything that basically you can use to generate all, all these uh, outputs and then the chip hookup specification from which you could generate RTL and the documentation and ultimately benefiting all these people, in fact, everybody in, in the um, SOC team, the RTL designers, verification, embedded programmers, lab, bring up team, uh, and even technical writers. So we see a lot of, uh, 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 you know, uh, everything here kind of touches on the, you know, the, the uh, things that are needed by the verification engineers. So let's take a closer look at, at the at each of these blocks. So register and memory specification, these could be in any of the uh, either either industry standard formats like IPXAC, system RDL, uh, and so on, or people are comfortable doing it in Excel or Word, uh, maybe using a specialized editor. And uh, the uh, capturing it is one thing, and then you know basically checking it. Uh, making sure uh, it is accurate, um, that, uh, you know, everything can be generated from it. And capturing errors or, or checking for errors which are going to be uh, shown uh, downstream. Um, and you know, generating synthesizable uh, Verilog or System C, UVM models, uh, supporting multiple buses, uh, industry standard buses. And you know we've been doing this for uh, a decade almost, and still we find new types of registers and and uh, and you know, ways to uh, you know special uh, uh, special types of registers. Uh, so it, it it's not just a simple thing as you know okay registers it has fields and that's it you know read write. Uh, there there can be various types of things. We like you know we have been discovering it <laughs> all these years, um, and then. Uh, with this, you know, comes additional uh, requirements. For example, I mean, it's not just a simple thing as just creating RTL, but now, you know, with functional safety and you know, multiple clock domains, you might have uh, um, uh, additional requirements of, uh, you know, like parity, CRC, uh, triple modular redundancy, and low power, and so on. So, uh, but this can be captured, uh, and we have done it, and you know, proper uh, uh, verification models and 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 design and and header files and APIs can automatically be created. Uh, this is just a sample of uh, what it could be. It could look like is you know to capture it in in a Word document and and similarly in Excel and System RDL and IP Exact. Well, the idea is to just capture that information and not let that be duplicated in all the teams by all the teams. And outputs like, for example, VHDL, uh, system Verilog, or system C uh, could be automatically generated. A lot of time is wasted otherwise. Um, so custom sequence specification. Um, so this is uh, basically, there are two types of sequences. One is uh, programming sequences. Um, and then there is uh, the testing sequences, uh, which, uh, which, 
uh, test sequences are uh, really uh, what I'm talking about is low level sequences, not the ones that at a high level SOC level that uh, that uh, both Nick and Dave were talking about PSS addresses. I'm talking about how do you implement it down at the low level. So like register memory uh, read writes. Uh, so you have these uh, specification that um, uh, uh, that need to be uh, uh, collected. And then, you know, from that generate the UVM sequences for the verification team and C++, C++ for uh, embedded code for uh, verification team, as well as uh, the lab bring up team as well. And the embedded programmers uh, when they're developing firmware, uh, firmware and, and device drivers. So capturing it, capturing these programming sequences and test sequences is uh, is very useful, very critical, so that it can be used um, by different teams and at, and at various levels. One of the additional benefits is that you can uh, generate uh, um, uh, tests for the ATE team as well. So this is something like it could, it could uh, the documentation, for example, you know, what it looks like, everybody can agree to it and, uh, uh, and, and see what it is because a lot of oftentimes you know uh, time is wasted and uh, bugs creep in because you know people are re-implementing these uh, uh, sequences either programming or test sequences um, so here is an example of capturing a, uh, a sequence in uh, excel spreadsheet um, so it's talking about so uh, basically pointing to where the registers are. Uh, it, it could be in one of the, uh, another file where you have all the register definitions and then, you know, creating these steps involved. You know, what are the steps to create that sequence? Um, so here are the outputs uh, from that uh, capturing of that uh, sequence. You could um, uh, generate UVM, system log, C, and, and the uh, documentation from it. Um, so uh, I, IP blocks, you know, this is basically what we've done is, you know, taken the uh, register and memory and, and the sequences associated with it to uh, a level higher than that. So things like, you know, things that are common in all SOCs like, uh, like GPIO, uh, uh, timer, PWM, DMA. So capturing that those type of blocks, or or and also generating them, um, is uh, uh, is also uh, uh, something that you could do. Is like you know create a set of IP standard IP blocks and and reuse them. Uh, and um, basically. Uh, these IPs are to be generated, you know, they shouldn't be encrypted, they should be just, you know, indistinguishable from uh, handcrafted code. Um, and uh, of course, they should be fully verified. And, and in addition to RTL, uh, you should also have the uh, UVM test bench or the appropriate API that would access these um, IPs. Okay, so um, uh, uh, okay, so this basically helps you create correct bike construction, reusable design, because the IPs uh, are already pre-verified. So here is an example of um, like the, the programming sequence for like a timer, for example, can be configured in the multiple ways to by selecting generation parameters and and uh, runtime parameters, for example, you know, for, you know, you could customize it for, uh, by adding additional uh, registers and fields to it. So this is just showing, you know, how you can create these IPs uh, and the associated uh, API with the IPs. And the last aspect is the chip hookup specification. Um, what that is, is basically a flexible and customizable environment for design assembly. So all the IPs are uh, connected together. Uh, using a specification format. So um, 
and you know supporting IP exec because some of the IPs you get are in uh, IEEE standard uh, uh, and you know cap you know kind of combining your homegrown RTL with the standard IP um, uh, capturing all of that information in an executable specification format and then generating output from it um, that is that is very useful so it could also be you know like the uh, automation that I showed from registers, uh, the output that those tools create, they can be consumed, as well as your own IP that I talked about. Uh, you could connect that as well. So, and then automatically generating the plumbing between these IPs. So a lot of time is wasted when you have to create these bus aggregators and bridges and and mixers and 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 uh, um, you know other types of plumbings. Um, so, so for example, here you have an aggregator which I was just talking to. Uh, the the aggregator is automatically created when you're connecting the blocks together, and the bridge is automatically created when you're connecting an AHB, for example, to ATB, and so on. So, things that can be automated are uh, immensely better because you spend less time debugging and writing tests for them because they're already pre-verified and you know if the tool is good then then you know you you save your debug time um, so and you know another thing that you that that it helps is like you could do the design rule checking before generating the rtl once again everything is basically uh, pointing to uh, you know, lowering the debug time. Uh, and of course, documentation, everything is all in sync because, uh, um, because you know, the tool has generated the documentation. So in summary, SOC design development is uh, incredibly, incredibly complex and the specification changes add even more challenges. And so focus on the specification and automatic generation from that specification, not Everything is uh, is uh, uh, is available as a as a standard, but you know you have to do what you can. You know, so um, so you must automate hardware design, software coding, verification, validation, and documentation because they're all in sync. You change one, then other things do get changed. And verification automation must include standard and custom sequences, not just the registers uh, running in both UVM and embedded C environment and at Agnesis we provide these solutions that save you valuable time in each of these categories and not just once but every time the spec changes that's all I had hope I meet at the time any questions that's perfect timing um, unfortunately we're out of time for any questions but um, thank you very much for new Pam um, there's, you, uh, there's no questions online either. anyway so but uh, thank you very much